Joining us right now to talk more about what to expect from today's meeting on the J&J vaccine, as well as the record number of cases out of India and a new COVID variant we just heard about in Texas, is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's the former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor. He also serves on the boards of both Pfizer and Illumina. And Scott, we've been talking to you all week. You anticipate that the CDC will go ahead and lift that pause with this meeting today, correct? That's right. Well, look, the CDC is just going to issue a recommendation. Ultimately, the pause is a regulatory action that's going to be taken by the FDA. The FDA issued um, the recommendation that people pause using the vaccine. And so ultimately, they're going to issue a new recommendation and maybe update the label on the vaccine. CDC today is going to opine on that decision, offer some insights. I would expect CDC to opine favorably and say that, you know, FDA should lift the pause on the vaccine. It doesn't appear that there's a lot more cases that have been surfaced. The European Union went ahead and resumed use of the vaccine with just some additional warnings. And you have to believe that the EU had access to the data that's currently available. Um, we weren't sure two weeks ago how many cases there were. And in the intervening two weeks, when they've done a pretty exhaustive analysis looking for additional cases, it appears that they've just surfaced perhaps a handful. So this appears to be a very rare side effect. And I would expect CDC to issue a recommendation that we resume use of the vaccine today. One thing we haven't talked about this morning is this new report about a new variant that, that surfaced at Texas A&M University in a lab there. Um, this variant is supposedly more, more dangerous, especially to younger people, too, and it lasts longer. Um, how concerned are you about this? Well, look, there's a lot we don't know about it. I don't think that we can really draw conclusions based on the analysis that came out of Texas. And I did read the report. Um, there's a lot of variants that we're not detecting. Uh, it, takes, it takes a lot of introductions for a variant to start really circulating at levels that are going to create a new wrinkle to the epidemic. And so I'm not too concerned about it at this point. Um, we do know that there's a number of mutations that are concerning the 484K mutation, the L452R mutation that we found in the Los Angeles variant that seem to make the virus more contagious and in some cases seem to make um, the vaccines perhaps a little less effective and also seem to increase the propensity for people to get reinfected. Now, that's all speculative. We're not sure. Um, we should have better evidence on these questions, but we don't at this point. But the bottom line is that there's a lot of these mutations circulating around. It takes a while for a mutation really to gain the kind of traction that we saw with B117. So if one of these is going to emerge, we're going to see it coming at this point. We have pretty good sequencing in place and we'll be able to take steps to try to mitigate it. I guess the thing that that I've kind of keyed into on that was just the idea that it's more dangerous to younger people. We, we haven't been in quite as much of a rush to get the vaccine approved for younger people to this point because it wasn't as dangerous uh, in general to younger people. Um, but Pfizer, I, I think, re put those results in to for ages 12 to 15 year olds, the phase three study that they'd done with that to the FDA. I want to say it was like a month ago. How long before you start getting approval for, for younger people for these vaccines? Well, look, the FDA said that they're going to try to work through the application efficiently on the 12 to 15. That was the application that was put in um, for the, with the FDA uh, requesting emergency use authorization. It's really hard to draw conclusions that any one strain is more dangerous than young people. And I certainly wouldn't do that off the report that came out of Texas. We know that these strains that are more contagious or perhaps more virulent in adults don't spare children. So B117, for example, appears to be more contagious in adults. It also appears to be more contagious in children. So we should expect that these variants that emerge that have different characteristics and how they affect adults are probably going to affect children in the same proportion. Now, children overall appear to be at less risk from coronavirus. So they're hopefully going to be at less risk from these new variants. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to be at more risk from the new variants that also affect adults in untoward ways. And so, you know, we need to keep an eye on these variants as they emerge. Right now, it does appear that B117 is becoming the predominant strain in the United States. And that's hopefully going to crowd out some of these other variants like 1351, the South African variant of P1, the Brazilian variant. And in fact, we're not seeing those variants really take off here. The incidence of P1 has increased. It's gone from about 1 to 2 percent. But it hasn't taken off like it has in other markets. And that's part, probably because of the vaccination rates and probably also because B117 to some extent is crowding it out. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.